So why would microbes be exciting? I mean, sure, you can discover some new microbes, but you can discover some new microbes on Earth. I mean, you turn over any rock and you're just going to discover dozens of new microbes unknown to science. We've only cataloged a very tiny fraction of the microorganisms on Earth. So why would we spend billions of dollars to go to Mars and categorize a few more if they're even there in the first place? I mean, it's a good question, right? But I think the problem is we haven't seen anything, not even the other microbes on Mars. And there's a lot we could learn if we find them, right? Yeah, so the basic idea is, I mean, on Earth, all life is related. Yep. So not only am I related to you somewhere back in a family <laughs> tree, but I'm also related to this koala. Um, I'm related to the fungus. A, a little bit cu more cuddlier than you, Paul, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm also related to the, the fungus that grows on my toes. I mean, all life on Earth, if you look at the genetic structure and the DNA, yep. it all comes back to the same ancestry. Yep. And so presumably what happened on Earth is that sometime, you know, four billion years yep. ago, the first life form happened. And we've all and this evolved. wouldn't have been a koala. That's right. But we've all evolved from that first thing. Yep. So the first thing had to be, would have presumably been much simpler than life forms today, but it must have been capable of making copies of itself, reproducing. That's right. And so it reproduced, and some of the copies it made were better than others, and the natural selection took over, and the better ones survived, and the worse ones, I mean, worse in the sense of... Yeah, being yeah. so good at surviving, and no, no moral superiority is implied here. I feel a lot of looking down on that poor bacteria, Paul. Yes, and, and before, before long, you know, only four billion years later, it's come to koalas and enough. you and me and the queen and everything else. Um, so that's the puzzle. When you look at, if you look at found life somewhere else, it's only going to be bacteria. But the question is, is it related to life on Earth or is it different? Yeah, I mean, I guess it becomes interesting, right? Because if it's related, that's interesting. And if it's not related, that's also interesting. Yeah. I mean, the, the reason why it would be very interesting if it's not related is because life is very complicated. I yep. mean, we want something that's capable of making copies of itself. Yep. And the simplest things that are capable of making copies of themselves on Earth today yep. are basically bacteria. Yep. I mean, viruses are simpler, but they can only use our cell to make copies exactly, of themselves. That's right. They're not, they, they couldn't survive without more complicated life forms. And if you look at what's happening inside a cell or a bacteria, the simplest things that are going on today, it's insanely complicated. Yeah, I think we just say, hey, it's bacteria, it's one thing, that's easy, right? But if you look inside a cell, uh, the, the number of machines, these are molecular machines, yep. far too small to see even with a microscope, and these molecular machines are doing things like copying DNA, splicing things apart, building structures, generating energy, um, billions and, of times all the time yep and so as any molecular biologist can tell you a cell is not simple <laughs> it's very small but the level of complexity here is actually way beyond human technology I mean yeah. if humans could reproduce this that would be nanotechnology far beyond the dreams of the, the greatest technologists in the world and this is what's happened in evolution yeah so a famous quote from Fred Hoyle yep. is that well, so the idea is that you must have had some stagnant pool in the early Earth and some random chemical reaction produced something that was capable of reproducing itself. And then, boom, evolution takes over in over four billion years. But, as he famously said, the odds of a random chemical reaction producing a functioning cell is about the same as the odds of a whirlwind blowing through a junkyard and producing a Boeing 747. Yeah, it doesn't seem likely. <laughs> in fact, it's much worse than that. A Boeing 747 has about 20,000 parts, whereas a <laughs> cell is more like, like two million working parts, which as we've seen in these videos, are incredibly complicated, finely designed machines that interact in amazing ways. We, we, we often kind of diminutize, oh, it's just a cell, it's quite easy, without re appreciating the vast complexity that it's gone into. That's right. So this is why uh, it could be, when we look out at the night sky, that it was just a one in a trillion, trillion, trillion fluke. Essentially what you're saying is, it's so hard to do Yes, you're bound to do it because of how many stars and, and planets there are out there, but it's not going to happen that often. Yeah, so in that case, the Earth would be incredibly fluid. There would be lots, maybe millions, we now know there are lots of planets out yep. there, lots probably suitable for life, but it could be that this incredibly unlikely fluke, that, that reaction that produced the first self-reproducing thing just didn't happen because it's so unlikely. So one way of also saying that is then we're the statistical fluke. We're the error almost in this process. So we're sitting here wondering how incredibly unlikely it is that we are here, but that's because there's billions upon billions of other planets that didn't happen, so yep. we're the one in a trillion trillion. 
But of course, if we see life anywhere else that's not related to us, yep. that's telling us it's evolved twice. And it's probably not likely as rare as it may seem. Yeah, so I mean, we don't think that a current, current day bacteria is what was the first thing. Yep. Um, the first thing that created life would have been much simpler, presumably. Yeah. And the bacteria we now see is a production of four billion years of evolution. And we know for most of that four billion years, all we had were single-celled organisms. Yep. And they were, the evolution was just developing all the incredibly complicated machinery inside them until eventually, what, 600 million, 700 million years ago, they started getting together and forming multicellular organisms. So, uh, but we know there's one clue that maybe is a bit easier than we think, okay. which is we can look at very old rocks on Earth yep. uh, and see signs of life. Okay. So you've got rocks that can be more than three billion years old, and they show in this case what are signs of stromatolites. Yep. Okay. Uh, stromatolites yeah, are yeah, yeah. mats of uh, microorganisms. Here's some current day living ones in Western Australia. I was say, Western, yeah. <laughs> this is a very typical Western Australia pose right now, stromatolites. Yes. And we, we can see that the very oldest rocks on Earth that are well enough preserved that we have any hope of seeing life and recognizing it do seem to show signs of life. Okay. So if it got going that quickly, then Maybe. That there must be something simple enough that it can, has a reasonable chance of forming a fluke, yeah. but also capable of reproducing itself stably enough to set this evolution thing going. Yeah. So, who knows? But if we saw life anywhere else that was unrelated to us, that means it's got going twice in two planets. Yep. And that means it's going to be pos common. And that means when we go and look at a huge field of stars like this, they're probably all going to have life. Okay. But what if they're the same? But if it's the same, then... Another possibility is that life is actually being carried back and forth between the planets. We know that meteorites yep. on Mars will blow rocks out, some of which land on Earth, yep. and vice versa. We have Martian meteorites on Earth. and We have moon meteorites on the Earth. And, and Earth presumably on there are Earth meteorites on Mars, and yep. we haven't found them. Um, and so it could be that, in fact, life just got started by this one trillion trillion fluke on Earth, and then was carried to Mars. Okay. Or maybe it got started on Mars, and then was carried to Earth. And this might actually help explain how it survived early on when all these meteorites were happening, the late heavy bombardment. Maybe you know, the Earth got turned into lava, but rocks got thrown to Mars, life then survived on Mars, then was blown back to Earth when Mars was hit. And maybe this is how it got to survive this early stage. Until it settled down. So much bombardment. So either way is interesting.